What's going on everyone? It's Mid40s Gamer here coming at you with some more Hogwarts Legacy content. Today we're going to be taking a look at the ultimate beginner's guide so you aren't stuck scratching your head throwing controllers or punching clowns. This guide will help you navigate all the quirky things within the walls of Hogwarts and beyond, giving you the edge that you need for your first playthrough. So let's get ready to look through a wide angle lens, tell Professor Weasley nothing comes from nothing, and get after it. The first thing that we're going to be taking a look at is the sorting ceremony, and while your house has no real bearing on whether you're a good wizard or a dark one, there are a few differences based on what you choose. There are specific answers that you'll have to give to the all-knowing sorting hat. For Gryffindor, you'll have to be daring with a sense of adventure, and to get a seat in the mighty Slytherin house, you'll need an overwhelming sense of ambition, which is a no-brainer for the darker side of the wizarding world. For Hufflepuff, you'll need an unerring sense of loyalty, bringing out that trait in others around you, and being a true friend to all you encounter. For Ravenclaw, you'll need the drive of curiosity, and the motivation to solve mysteries with the same enthusiasm as Sherlock Holmes, in order to be the puzzle solver for the wizarding world. At the end of the day, you can choose whatever house best suits the story that you want to build for your character. No matter what path you choose, one of the main differences, which is fairly low impact and mainly revolves around aesthetics, is that each house will have its very own entrance at a different location within the castle. Each unique area is fairly different and extremely well detailed, which further lends to the character story. Perhaps one of the biggest impacts your choice will have is the house side quest. If you choose Gryffindor, you'll be paired up on an adventure with Nearly Headless Nick. Slytherin students will take a trip outside the walls with the headmaster's house elf and do a little cave diving. If you choose Hufflepuff, you'll dodge a few Dementors and get to explore a small portion of Azkaban prison. And for Ravenclaw, you'll pair up with Mr. Ollivander and solve an old mystery in the Hogwarts Tower of Owls. All of these house quests will end in the final quest, The Ghost of Our Love, and if you need help solving its riddle, we've left a link in the description just for you. One of the main pieces of advice we have after quite a few playthroughs is to spend your first semester just being a student. It's extremely easy to get sidetracked exploring every nook and cranny and helping your fellow students with a host of side quests, but if you resist that urge, the meat and potatoes of your first five hours of gameplay will be getting through the first semester. You'll have to attend a host of different classes, such as herbology and potion making, as well as learning a host of spells and defense against the dark arts in order to add to your repertoire. Once you do a little main story grinding until the season turns from summer to fall, you'll be set up to venture out and do quite a bit of worthwhile exploring. In the interest of exploring, as far as navigation goes, the 3D Hogwarts map is absolutely stunning, but may get a little confusing when trying to get from point A to point B. You can select locations directly on the map using the flag icons after unlocking flu flames, but the easiest way to get where you need to go is just by utilizing the flu flame location list on the left side of the screen. Another extremely useful tool is the locate on map feature in your field guide. By selecting a quest and pressing the triangle button, you'll be automatically keyed into the location that you need to get to for that specific quest. This feature will also plot a course so that you can use your magical field guide to light the way. You can actually use this field guide feature by pressing up on the D-pad, which will fire out a magical golden tether that you can follow directly to your destination. This feature is extremely useful if you're immersing yourself in the game and playing without a heads-up display. Next is the world map, which is extremely user-friendly as well, especially if you plan on collecting everything that the game has to offer. When zoomed out all the way, the game provides you with the checklist of the region so you don't miss any collectibles. With all the basics out of the way, it's time to get into all the puzzles that you'll run into throughout your exploration of Hogwarts Castle. One of the first mysteries you'll likely run into are the plethora of puzzle doors strewn throughout the castle. There is a trick to deciphering these mystery doors, which, as you can see from the map footage, will take you to the Divination Classroom Flu Flame on the map. Once you have boots on ground at the flu flame, there will be a hallway with a small set of stairs behind you leading to a wooden balcony path. If you follow the path and take your very first right, you'll come across a small makeshift study nook outside one of these puzzle doors. It would seem that someone's been trying to crack the mystery of these doors for quite some time, and while you won't find much in terms of answers on the blackboard, there is a container you can open that has the exact cipher you need to crack the code. To solve this rather unique puzzle, all you need to do is number the creatures around the door from 0 through 9 starting from left to right. 
This will allow you to do some gee whiz math to answer the two sums on the door by utilizing the nearby question mark mechanisms to display the missing numerical code. Once you solve both math problems while counting on all your fingers and toes, the door will open revealing some well-earned treasure. While wandering the halls, you'll also come across mirrors surrounded by a frame comprised of butterflies which serves as a small puzzle. In order to solve them, you'll need to utilize Lumos which will reveal a picture of a nearby area where the frame's missing butterfly is located. You'll need to find the butterfly, cast Lumos to attract it to the light, and lead it back to the frame. Once you stop the Lumos spell near the mirror, the puzzle is solved and all that's left to do is to add the field guide page to your collection. Another thing you may notice around the castle are some curious looking locked cabinets. These cabinets actually belong to a side quest called the Dandelion Keys, which can be started by talking to Nellie Ogspire in the Fountain Courtyard after fast traveling to the Transfiguration Classroom Flu Flame. After starting the quest, you'll have to hunt down flying keys around the castle, and once they're discovered, they'll fly off to the closest cabinet in the area. After interacting with the cabinet, you'll enter into a small mini game where you'll have to swat the key into the hole in order to open up the cabinet. Inside the cabinets are house tokens, which can be utilized to open up the house chest that is locked within your common room once you've collected them all. There are 15 keys in total in a host of different areas on the map, and while this quest may seem tedious, it's more than worth the effort since the prize is a stunning relic house robe. Our next stop will be Hogsmeade, which is reached early on as the sixth main quest within Hogwarts Legacy. Much like the castle, you can get a bit lost in the overwhelming landscape of this quaint wizarding village, but you'll be prompted to visit Tomes and Scrolls, which primarily sells conjurations that can be used in the Room of Requirement once you unlock it. Obtaining them all will take quite a bit of coin, and if you need a fast farming method, we'll leave a link in the description just for you. You'll also need to visit J. Pippin's Potions, where you can buy potion ingredients and recipes so you can whip up your own potions at potion crafting tables. Potions can be fairly useful when playing on harder difficulties, particularly for the offensive and defensive effects. You'll also visit the Magic Neep for your very basic plant seeds in order to hone your green thumb and develop your own potion ingredients. And while you aren't prompted for the quest, you can also head over to Dogweed and Deathcap for some more aggressive plant products such as Mandrake and Venomous Tentacula. One of the most prominent pieces of wizarding equipment for any wizard can be found at Ollivander's. After all, what's a witcher wizard without a wand? The wand making process is very in-depth, however, it has no bearing on wizarding power and is purely aesthetic. That being said, you do have the ability to create the perfect wand for you by changing the wand's style, wood type, length, flexibility, and the core. The three cores are dragon heartstring, unicorn hair, and the phoenix feather. Once you finalize your wand, you'll have it for the duration of the game, and the only change that you can make to it is adding custom wand handles that you'll find throughout the lands. Another thing that's important to note is that you should use Revelio as often as you can in order to uncover field guide pages and other treasures or collectibles nearby. Collecting these pages offers quite a bit of experience as well as rewards in the collection challenge section of your field guide. You'll encounter quite a few flying pages as well, and to pluck them out of the sky, all you'll need to do is cast Accio to add them to your field guide. In addition to playing Field Guide Duck Hunt, but without the NES Zapper, yet another important thing that bears mentioning is that there are some interesting chests that are littered throughout the Hogsmeade area. In order to open these chests, you'll need to have already learned the Disillusionment spell from Sebastian Sallow, which you get as part of the main storyline. Each one of these chests is filled with a standard 500 galleons, and opening all of them becomes quite lucrative when you first start out. To get you started, each of these orange target marks on this overlay are Disillusionment chests, with additional ones being on the outskirts of Hogsmeade and inside Tomes and Scrolls. Another important step you'll come across when grinding out the first semester is flying class. Once you get the broom, you can pretty much go full send on exploration if you want, but we recommend checking fire until the fall semester. Once you get a handle on how to control your broom, you'll need to cut class for the rest of the day and head back to Hogsmeade to grab a broom of your own from Spin Witch's sporting needs. The broom will allow you to cover a ton of ground, which you can utilize to systematically unlock all of the flu flames. Unlocking all of the flu flames makes life extremely easy later on in the game, not only for the main quest line, but side quests as well. The good news is, is that you can unlock a majority of these flu flame locations just by flying past them. There are some you'll need to dismount to unlock, but there are few and far between. 
There are also quite a few challenges outside the walls of Hogwarts, and if you're into cosmetics, there's a collection test that'll reward you with a pretty sweet gear set, the Quidditch Captain's Uniform. All the pieces of this set can be attained by landing on a series of hidden landing pads across the highlands, and then claimed in the landing platform section of your exploration challenge log. The set includes a uniform, helmet, gloves, and cape. At the start of the fall semester, you'll unlock the 22nd main story quest, The Caretaker's Lunar Lament, which is one of the more important quests that unlocks the spell Alohomora and the ability to do away with pesky locked doors. This is one of the main reasons you'll want to grind out your first semester, since nothing's worse than exploring early on and running into locked doors in places you really don't want to backtrack to. Casting this spell brings you into a lockpicking game of sorts that the game doesn't really explain all too well. You'll actually need to rotate the outer green ring until the gears in the bottom right corner light up, and then you'll need to rotate the inner red ring until the gears within the center begin to spin as well. Once both are held in position for a few seconds, the lock will pop open, granting you entry. In order to progress to Alohomora level 2, you'll need to collect 9 demigai statues scattered throughout Hogwarts, Hogsmeade, and the Highlands. After they're in your possession, you can return to Gadwin Moon for your Alohomora upgrade. To progress to the final level, you'll need to collect an additional 13 demigai statues for Alohomora level 3. It is important to note that the demigai statues can only be interacted with at night in order to collect the demigai's moon that's held inside. And if you discover one during the day, you can always open up the map and change the time from day to night. There are three main secrets that Hogwarts Castle has to offer, the first one being the Clock Tower puzzle, which prevents you from entering four gated doors with some fairly special loot inside. For this secret, you'll need to either have learned Arresto Momentum or Glacius in order to stop the pendulum at key points in its movement. Casting one of these spells stopping the pendulum in front of the symbols will temporarily open the gates barring the way to the coinciding doors. The doors are marked with the unicorn, the owl, the mantis, and the goblet symbols, and on top of the loot that you'll receive from this puzzle, you'll also complete one of three secret Hogwarts challenges in your field guide. In order to get the timing right, you'll need to know the path you'll be taking to each of the doors since spells don't exactly last forever. After opening the last chest, the next secret we'll be taking a look at is the Headmaster's Key, and you'll not only need to be equipped with Alohomora Level 3 to complete it, but you'll also need to have progressed far enough in the game to access the Headmaster's Office, which doesn't happen until the winter semester. Once in the office, you'll need to unlock the door to your left in order to reach an exterior walkway that leads up a set of stairs to another locked door. Once you unlock the second door, you'll gain access to a small room where you'll find the key of admittance, which is located on the desk. With the key in hand, you'll need to head back down the stairs to a door with a rather elaborate lock. Once the door is open, you'll find a legendary chest, a few collection chests, and a very rare field guide page. The last Hogwarts secret we'll be taking a look at is the Viaduct Courtyard Puzzle, and if you travel to the side of the bridge closest to the library annex, you'll notice a copper-colored manhole cover on the ground containing some rather unique symbols and Roman numerals on the outer ring. Each one of these symbols corresponds with a symbol that are marked on the brazers, and each Roman numeral corresponds with the number that brazier needs to be changed to. As you can see from the game footage, you'll need to first light the braziers with your choice of fire magic in order to interact with them. Once they're all lit, all that's left to do is rotate the braziers to match the Roman numerals on the manhole cover, and the cover will open up, revealing a ladder that you can take down to the lower level of the bridge. With the third secret unlocked, this Hogwarts challenge is complete, and all that's left to do is loot up the chests below. It is important to note that it really doesn't matter what order you light the braziers in, or what order you interact with them, as long as in the end they match the main symbol on the ground. Well folks, it looks like we're coming to the end of another Hogwarts Legacy video as we explain to our friends that our best friend Fluffy is a three-headed dog. We would like to take this time to personally thank you for watching, and if you're new to the channel and haven't done so already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any new mid-40s gamer content. And if you aren't too busy wondering why human thigh bones are stronger than concrete, leave us a comment in the comments section and let us know how we're doing. So until next time, just remember, messages from your brain travel along nerves at 200 miles per hour, when Chuck Norris gets in the water, sharks get out of the ocean, and as always, good hunting.